It's been an incredible past few months that many of you have very been very well aware of that we've been in a series called The Loading Screen. And God has been doing so much in these past few months. We've had opportunity, like I just showed, to be featured in mainstream media. We had opportunity over the past few months to speak. I think this is going to be episode 17 of the legendary Loading Screen series. And we've learned and accomplished so much. We've really learned what it means to pray. Many of us have taken time to really pray for the first time. We've talked about learning to trust God. And that's really been the premise behind the whole series. That when you're in that series, uh, that season of waiting, you don't know what's coming next. You're asking God to bring you something. It's like when we play video games and you've only got 30 minutes of free time and you're trying to get to the good stuff, trying to get right into the game. But before the game starts, of course, you got to go through the loading screen and that stupid circle spinning over and over and over and over again until we can get into the game. And in our lives, we don't always know what's coming next. And we, we're asking God to bring the big dreams our way. But in the meantime, we're waiting and learning to trust God in that season of waiting. And in that, for the past several months, we've really been talking so much about trusting God, talking about prayer for the first time ever. We went into a season of prayer and fasting, talked in great, great detail about what all that means. And many of you joined us on that journey. We had amazing stories of marriages that were blessed, couples that prayed together for the first time ever. We had people that heard from God. We had people that really, really got a chance to understand why am I in the loading screen that we're in and accompanying that good old loading screen. We've been really not just talking about prayer, but we've accompanied this series with a book called The Circle Maker. And I hope you had a chance to read it. And we really took our time going through it. This book honestly changed my life when I read it in college and it blessed my heart and it taught me really about prayer. And the book talks about praying big prayers to a big God. And we've gone through it little by little. We've touched on it in some of our sermons. We didn't necessarily base the sermons directly off the chapters because we've been going through basing our sermons off of God's word, the Bible, but we've, we've referenced it. We've, we've touched on it. You guys talked about it little by little in your small groups, and I hope you've been blessed by it. The past two weeks, Pastor Joey and Pastor Boz, they referenced it as well. We're going to reference it tonight, but I'm excited because tonight we're actually going to finish the book. All 19 chapters we've touched on as a church, and I pray that you got a chance to read it. And even though we're finishing it up tonight, if you haven't already, make sure to pick yourself up a copy. Because can I tell you, this thing will bless you. But as I was preparing for this week, I was really reading a statement in the book that, to be honest, I had to just read over and over again. Because as I read it, I really felt God just in my heart, just really, just really read it over and over again. And kind of really grasp what the book is saying. And I'm going to read this statement to you. It's in one of the last chapters of the book. Page 219, and Mark Batterson writes this. He says, God is not j great just because he does things, just because nothing's too big for him. God is great because nothing is too small for him. I want to read it again. God is great not just because nothing is too big for him, but God is great because nothing is too small for him. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I serve a God who's not just concerned with the big things in my life, but God's concerned also with the little things that are going on. My little stresses, my little struggles, my little difficulties, the things that really, really have hurt you deep, but everyone says, oh man, that's nothing. That's not even a big deal. Just get over it. God has compassion for you and he cares about the little things in your life. He's not just concerned with the big. He's concerned also with the little. But as I was reading it, I felt God almost asking me the question that God doesn't just care about the big. He also cares about the little. But here's what I've come to ask you. Do you? Have we allowed ourselves to just be focused on the big things that we want God to do in our lives that we forget about the little things that he also wants to do? Have we allowed ourselves to get so focused on our loading screen? And have we allowed ourselves to get so focused on the dream, so focused on the big miracle that we've been asking God to answer for us, that we forget about the little things that God in the meanwhile has also been wanting to do? Have we allowed ourselves to get so focused on the plans for the future that we forget about the little things that God wants to do? Have we grown so big as a church that we've forgotten about the individual people like Monk Spy that are coming in our chat that I want you to know that God loves you, man. 
Can I tell you that no matter how big this church get, we never forget about the individual people that come our way. So Monks, I want you to know, man, that even though you're getting some of your comments deleted, it, I want you to know we love you, man. We appreciate you. We want to do our best to make this a place that's safe and an encouraging environment for everyone. But can I tell you, man, I hope that you'll stick around. hope you'll be a part of this message. Because even though you might feel like you are a one person on a big planet, can I tell you that a big God has a big passion for you? And have we allowed our lives to be so tunnel visioned on the big things that we're asking God to do that we forget about the small ones? And I want to preach a message to you that I've entitled Distracting Dreams. We've been talking for several months about the loading screen and looking ahead towards the future, looking ahead towards the future, the dream, the dream, the dream, focusing on what's big, but have we spent so long focusing on what's big that we have forgotten to focus on what is small. I want to read to you a story from someone that we touched on just a few weeks ago by the name of Joseph. If you didn't get to hear that message, The Road to Resistance, I want to challenge you to go back to the YouTube channel. If someone could spam the uh, YouTube uh, channel in the link, go ahead and subscribe and watch that video, The Road to Resistance. And really our premise was that resistance is not always a reason to retreat. And for many of you, this is the first time you've ever been introduced to the idea in the person of Joseph. And I want to bring him back on the screen tonight, but I want to talk about him from a different perspective in the idea of distracting dreams. And I want to read chapter 37 of Genesis, starting in verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 11. Then we're going to really dissect it and talk under this topic. Let's read verse number 1. It says, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. You're going to be familiar. We talked about this exact story a few weeks ago, but we're going to bring a new perspective to it. Joseph, a young man of 17. Some of you are 17 in the chat. Put a 17 in the chat if you're 17 in the chat was tending the flocks with his brothers, the son of Billah and the sons of Zilpah, right? Hallelujah, that these are our names today. Thank you, Jesus. His father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Remember that because we're going to come back to it. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an ornate robe for him when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them. They hated him. Dang. They hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now, Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. They said to him, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to Joseph, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And because of this, it says that they hated him all the more because of the dream that he had. Verse number nine, it says, then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And then the time and the sun and the moon and the 11 stars, they were bowing down to me. And when he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and he said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brother actually come down and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in hand. If you've ever heard the full story of Joseph, and if you hadn't, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to that message where you'll hear the whole story. But really, when people talk about Joseph, you can't detach the dream from Joseph. You just can't. You can't talk about the story of Joseph and not bring up the dream. That's like his thing. Everyone's known for something different, right? Pastor Boz is known for the Kappa Boz. Unworthy Serve is known for the good old bread. Pastor Joe is known for having 9,000 bottles of G Fuel. Joseph's known for the dream, okay? It is his thing. But the reality is, and I touched on this in that other message, that before Joseph ever has the dream, he has a dilemma. Verse number two, back up on the screen, it says, this is the account of of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the son of Bilhah, the son of Zilpah, and his father wives, and catch this, and he brought their father a bad report about them. I'm not going to lie, Joseph had some pretty bad brothers. They were toxic people we talked about in the past few messages, and the reality is that what you and I can probably relate to Joseph more on than we can relate to his dream, because I don't know about you, I've never been the second in command of Pharaoh. 
I don't know about you, I've never been in such a super high position of authority where I just tell like thousands of people what they do and they do it. I, I don't know about you, I can't really relate to Joseph in that sense. But maybe we can relate to Joseph in this sense, that he had some family problems. He had bad relationship with his brothers. I don't know about you, I'll, I'll probably share the story at some point, but I did not have a good relationship with my brother growing up. To the point where it ended up really, really bad, where my brother and I didn't speak for almost five whole years. Thank God things are getting better now and we've forgiven one another, but it's a story in its own. But I can relate to Joseph more in this sense than I can in his dream. I can relate more to his dilemma than I can to his dream. But what we need to catch here is that Joseph, he's got some really bad family problems. And it says that he brought their father a bad report about them. So Joseph goes to his dad and says, Dad, this is going on between me and the brothers. And that's the last time we hear about it. Never again throughout the story of Joseph do we see Joseph make an attempt to bring resolution between him and his brothers. It's the very last time. He goes to his dad, says, hey, dad, this happened, and that's it. But then we read a few verses later. That was verse number two. Just in verse number five, we read, then Joseph had a dream. And from that moment on, we barely see the dilemma yet again. And for the next several chapters in all the, all the lives, all the years of Joseph's life, all you're going to hear about is the dream. And all Joseph is going to talk about is the dream. I need to get to the dream. I'm in prison. I got to get to the dream. I was lied to about by this person, but I got to get to the dream. The dream, the dream, the dream, the dream. And dare we say that Joseph was so focused on the dream that he allowed his dream to distract him from his dilemma. Joseph from the very moment that he had a dream, from the very moment that God gave him something big, a dream, he forgot about what many of you might consider to be something small, his family. His family didn't have any fame attached to it. His family didn't have any prestige attached to it. Maybe some of you might consider family to be something small compared to your biggest dreams. But have we allowed our own lives to be so focused on the, on the dreams that we've allowed our dreams to actually distract us from other things that God wants to do in our life? Can I tell you that God did want to fulfill the dream in Joseph's life? But can I tell you that what God also wants us to do is to not neglect the small things in our life? All of us would agree that distractions are normally a bad thing. Distractions normally, normally are bad. Maybe you've been at work and maybe you've even been watching my scream and a passer punch comes out of nowhere and you get a little bit distracted, okay? If you're watching at work, you should probably be muting my stream. I talk way too much for you to be watching at work. But normally distractions are a bad thing. But the misunderstanding that we have about distractions is that although distractions are a bad thing, sometimes we think that distractions can only come from a bad thing. But can I tell you that here we're reading that Joseph was distracted from his dilemma, but he wasn't distracted by a bad thing. He was actually distracted by a good thing. He was distracted by a dream. And this was not just any dream. He didn't have some pizza before night. We just had dominoes before dinner. Thank you, Jesus. We, he wasn't distracted by a bad thing. He was distracted by a dream of God. And in verse two, we see that Joseph has a dilemma between him and his family. But as soon as verse five comes around, it's all about the dream, all about the dream. And we read all the way from verse five to 11, all about the dream. He brings it up and here's the reality. After the dream comes up, let's put verse five back up. Look what Joseph does. He allows himself to be distracted. Verse five, Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, look what happened. The dilemma resurfaces. They hated him all the more, but Joseph, was so distracted by his dream, he didn't even really have time to process that his brothers felt so negatively towards him. Joseph's response to him, to them hating him was, listen to this dream I had. Joseph allowed himself to be so distracted by the small things in his, from the small things in his life that he just tunnel visioned on his dream. Just tunnel visioned on it. And he did it. Time and time again, even in verse number eight, his brothers said to him, do you intend to rule over us? 
Will you actually rule us? And they hated him. The dilemma resurfaces again. I mean, it's in Joseph's face. And they hated him all the more because of the dream. Look at Joseph's response. Then he had another dream. And he told it to his brother. I mean, you're reading this. You're like, Joseph, can you catch a hint, brother? Your dreams, your brothers don't want to hear about your dream. But Joseph was just so distracted. So distracted. But he wasn't distracted by a bad thing. He was actually distracted by a good thing. This was a dream of God. But Joseph had allowed his dream to become the number one priority in his life that he forgot about everything else. Everything else. Many of us have been so focused on getting out of the loading screen and we've been looking towards the light at the end of the tunnel. We're so focused on the big thing that we forgot about the small things. We forgot about that all while I'm working towards that promotion at work, I've also got to be working towards improving my marriage. All while I'm working towards making a difference in the world, I've got to be working on making a difference in my children. That all while I'm focusing on the big, focusing on the big, focusing on the big, I can't neglect focusing on the small. And it was right in Joseph's faith. Man, he's got some serious family problems. Which if you keep reading the story, <coughs> excuse me, a bit under the weather, you see that these problems had escalated to the point where his brothers had literally left him for dead. First, they were going to murder him. Then they realized let's make some money off this guy. But these weren't small problems. They escalated because Joseph was distracted. And I wonder today how many of us, we focus so much on the big things of life that we forget about the small things. We read in the book that God is a God of not just the big, but he's a God of the small. And we just tunnel vision. Like Joseph. I mean, it's right in his face. He tells him the dream. They tell him he, they hate him. And he's like, well, guess what? I had another dream. <laughs> I mean, you're reading it and you almost want to laugh. But don't we do the same? Don't we do the same? That we're so tunnel visioned and we're so focused on the dream, on the big, that we forget about the small. We've been in the series The Loading Screen for Almost five and a half months now. And for many of you, it seems like, man, that's a long time. I'll be honest. It's the longest series we've ever done here at God's Watch Church. Normally, they're three weeks, four weeks. A really, really long one is six weeks at the most. Five and a half months, that's a long time. You, br you bring that up to any other pastor and preacher, they're like, bro, are you crazy? You went five and a half months? But we decided when we started this, this series at the beginning of the year that we were going to pray until God answered us. That it didn't matter what church experts said, that you shouldn't do a series, longest eight weeks, we didn't care. We said, we're going to pray until God answers us. And the first sermon of the year, we started. We went through a series of prayer and fasting, and God did amazing things. And the reality is that we are in the process still of figuring out what's going on at the land, and we're actually making good progress, and things are still looking great. But in the road to resistance, we talked about all the difficulties that we're still working through. And the reality is that reach is a point. The reach is a point where we need to say that we are trusting God, and we're moving forward. Because although we don't have the land, God gave us the plan. He said, this is what we're going to do. We might not have the land yet, but the plan has been spoken. We said, we're going to pray until God answers us. Can I tell you, he's answered us. And now I believe in Jesus' name that it's time for us to move on from the loading screen and to see what else God is doing because we can't just be focused on on the big, we need to see, God, what else do you want to do with our church? What else, God, do you want to do with our people? It might not be as big of a deal as buying a $70,000 piece of land. It might be just, we want to improve an area of the church. We went to this amazing leadership conference this past week, and we learned so much that we can implement in our church to really help us reach more people, love the people that we already have better. But can you imagine how ridiculous it would be if God gave us all this new information and our response was, well, we'll wait until after we buy the land. But don't we do that with our lives? We're so focused on the big that we forget about the other small things that God is doing in our midst. 
And it may seem like we were in this series for a long time, and we were, but we were because God told us to. God told us to pray until he answered us. Now he's answered us. And for five and a half months, we've been chasing the big because we were being obedient. God told us to pray, so we did, and he's answered us. We were in it for this long because we were being obedient. But if we're not careful, what started off as being obedient, what started off as being obedience can turn into obsession. If you in your life are not careful to be mindful of God taking you into a season of focusing on something, what started off as obedience can turn into obsession. God will take you through seasons in your life, but that season can't last forever. Let me give an example. God took us through a season of prayer and fasting. You can fast for 21 days, but you can't fast for 21 years. We can't get so caught up on the season that we're in that we never catch the hint when God says it's time to move forward. Don't let your obedience turn into obsession where God's trying to move on, but you're stuck in the last phase. God says, now it's time to get to level two, but you're comfortable in level one because you've been here so long obsessing because you've only been thinking about what's big that you have forgotten about what's small. I'll be honest, I've not come to tell you. I'm even seeing in the chat, there must be a huge announcement coming. Can I tell you, there's not. In this season, God's not about to do something big, but he's about to do a lot of things that are small. But we can't allow ourselves to be so, so caught up in the obedience and not moving forward that it turns into obsession. But we do it in our lives, just like Joseph. We see the small things around us. We get so caught up with the dream that we forget about the dilemmas. We get so caught up in buying a piece of land that we forget that there are people in our church that need to be discipled. We've been in the season for five and a half months because God called us to do it. That was our obedience. But if we stay here, obedience turns into obsession. It's time to keep chasing God. It's time to move forward, but we can't allow ourselves to be so caught up on the big that we forget about the small. Can I tell you the dreams that God has given you in your heart they're not bad. They're actually from God. Joseph's dream, it was not a bad thing. But just because it was good doesn't mean it couldn't become a distraction. Joseph was distracted by what was good. His dream was meant to drive him. His dream was meant to be a direction that Joseph was supposed to go in. But if you're not careful and you only focus on the big and you only focus and you forget about the small, what was intended to become a drive will then become a detour. And you will end up missing all the small things that God wants to do in your life. If you're not careful, what was intended to be a drive will become a detour. And while you're just laser focused on the big, on the big, God says, on the way to the big, I want to teach you a bunch of small things. But you're missing all the small things, taking detour, detours, going all the way around because you've been laser focused, distracted by the dream. Distracted, Joseph. His brothers were trying to communicate to him, I really don't like your dream. And Joseph says, let me tell you about another one I had. It sounds so dumb, but we do it all the time. We allow what was intended to drive us, a path that God had set for us. We allow our drive to become a detour, allow our obedience to turn into obsession. And we just keep missing all the things that God wants to do in the meantime, we get so focused on the promotion at work that we forget that God also wants to teach us a little bit of patience with the guy down the hall. We've been so focused on putting in more hours and performing well that we forget about that there's been a guy, Jim. I always use the name Jim. I'm not really sure why. Jimmy's down the hall at the water fountain. And God says, I want, to sh I want you to share the love of Jesus with him. But you're so focused on getting that promotion that you just walk by Jim every day. Every day, every day, we focus on the big, focus on the big, we forget about the small. And I believe that as followers of Jesus, it is so imperative for us to learn to really multitask in our faith, that we can't just be caught up in learning one thing, that we really need to ask God to open our eyes. God, don't let us be distracted by what is good. Don't let us be distracted by our dreams, God. 
what is the grand scheme of everything you're doing right now? Because I think there's a false understanding that when it comes to our faith, you're going to learn one thing at a time. Here's the reality. If we only learned one thing at a time, we would actually never really learn one thing. Because if you think that you're going to master patience and then God's going to teach you on to learn self-control, you're never going to master patience, which means then you're never even going to get, you're never going to get to self-control, never going to get to kindness, never going to get to patience, never going to get to anything else until you master this, but you're never going to master it. You and I are never going to reach perfection. So oftentimes we're multitasking. God's teaching us to be kind, teaching us to be gentle, the fruit of the spirit, teaching us patience, teaching us self-control, teaching us to share our faith with other people. And oftentimes it's multitasking. We're just multitasking. And I believe that if we are going to be able to learn to multitask, we have to learn to multi-ask. We can't just say, God, give me the dream. God, give me the big thing. We, if we're going to be able to multitask, we have to learn to multi-ask. God, teach me to be patient with the guys at work, but teach me also to be selfless when I come home and my wife is exhausted from taking care of the kids. Help me to see her and help me to give, help me to do the dishes, help me to do whatever I need to do. But then God, when I go to my parents, God, help me to be gentle because I want to talk about about the things they did and all the things that they did to really, really make me aggravated. We're learning all these different things all at once in all the different areas of your life. You're learning patience at work. <laughs> you're learning how to work on three hours of sleep because you just had a newborn baby at home. You're learning how to be selfless because you just got married. You're learning all these things at once. You got to multitask. You can't be tunnel vision on the big that you forget about all the small things that God wants to do in your life. But in order to multitask, we have to multi-ask. God, give me patience. God, give me kindness. God, teach me gentleness. Not just God, give me the dream. Not just God, give me the promotion. If your prayers are only taken up by the dream, you are missing out on everything else God's trying to do in your life in this moment, in this very moment. And I would ask you, have you allowed your dreams to distract you? Have you allowed your dreams to turn from obedience to obsession? Have you allowed your dreams that was meant to be a drive become a detour around everything else that God's trying to do? Sometimes when it comes to receiving your dream, what you need to do is actually just let go and let God. Sometimes when it comes to accomplishing your dream, you need to reach a place where you say, okay, God, I'm not just going to focus 100% of my attention on it. doesn't mean you forget about it, but God, I'm not going to allow it to take up 100% of my prayer time. God, I'm going to start also focusing on other areas of my life. Just like the book said, God is not great because nothing is too big for him. He's also great because nothing is too small for him. Have we become too good to focus on the small things? And we think that we're only worthy of the big things. Have we reached a place where we've allowed our dreams to distract us from everything else that God wants to do? God doesn't just want to accomplish dreams in your life. He also wants to accomplish character and integrity and better your marriage and help you to be a better husband. You might not get a reward. You might not end up in a magazine for being a good husband. But that doesn't mean it's not chasing. It's not worth chasing. Are you so focused on what is big that we have forgotten about what is small? And I've come to tell you, some of you today, that God's calling you not to forget about your dream, but to reprioritize your thoughts, reprioritize your prayer life, and not to just pray for the dream, but to pray for everything else too. Asking God to give you patience, kindness, kindness. Don't be like Joseph, where at first he had a dilemma. He had family problems. But then the moment the dream happened, it was like the family problems just went out the window. And it was all he thought about. It was all he talked about. 
even when everything else that may seem small to him was right in front of him, but he was distracted by his dream. And I've come to tell some of you today that it's time to let go, and maybe you've heard it before, and let God. We don't have our land yet, but God has spoken. And it's time for us to not allow our obedience to turn into obsession and to say, God, we don't have the land in hand yet, but we know and trust that you're going to take care of all the details. So therefore, we can move on to something else. Therefore, therefore, we can start really looking towards God. What else are you doing in our church? God, else, what else are you doing in our church? What else are you doing with our people? What else are you doing in our lives? They might not be big and glamorous and end up in the newspaper, but it doesn't mean that they don't matter. God, how can you in this moment work on other areas so that we're not distracted by the dream? It's time for some of you to just trust that God's going to take care of your dream and start focusing on other areas of your life. Don't allow your obedience to turn into obsession. Don't allow your drive to turn into a detour. And we need to learn that if we're going to be followers of Jesus, that's going to mean multitasking. It's going to be learning this while learning this while learning this. So make sure when you pray, if you want to multitask, you need to multi ask. Don't ask just for the dream. Ask for God to be doing multiple things in your life so that you are not just a follower of Jesus who is distracted, but one who is focused on everything that God's doing in your life. We pray for you. God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much, God, for this incredible season. We have learned so much, God. We've learned where really what it means to pray. We've learned what it means to not give up. We've learned what it means to fast and to seek the face of God. We've learned what it means to really put our hope in you. We've learned what it means to really not grow weary when we're getting fed up and tired and God just wondering how long is this gonna take? God, we have gone through a process. We have wrestled with you and you, God, have been there with us. And we thank you so much, Lord, that we can put our faith and our trust in you. We can put our faith and our trust in you, God, before we ever, ever see the dream come to pass. But God, I pray today for all of us, for those of us, God, who we've been so focused on the dream that we've been distracted by the other things that, God, you want to do in our lives. And I pray that, God, you'd help us to open up our eyes today to see what are the other areas that, God, we need to now focus on. We need to now put our attention to you. I pray that God you'd speak to us as leaders of our church. God, what can we do now? What are other areas, even if they're small, even if they're not glamorous, even if no one's going to be talking about them, even if they're, they're not huge, exciting announcements, but they're just taking care of our people. God, lead and guide and direct us to do things that are small. But when we do a lot of things that are small, they make a big difference. I pray that you'd speak to every single person watching this right now, whether it's live, whether it's on a VOD, whether it's on YouTube. I pray that you'd open up their eyes to see what are the small lessons that, God, you want to teach them? What are the small things in their life, the people that they've been neglecting, that they haven't really talked to, that if they were to share that person, they were to share Jesus with that person, again, they're not going to end up in the newspaper. No one's probably ever even going to know. It's going to be a small thing, but you'll know. God, help us to not be distracted by our dreams. That we miss everything else you're doing in our lives. God, we thank you. We honor you. And we magnify the name of Jesus today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.